Hi, this is day 43 and it is brought to you by Kirchhoff. We already know Kirchhoff's second law, that is the voltage increase or the potential increase around a circuit is equal to the voltage or potential decrease around a circuit. Today we're actually going to learn Kirchhoff's first law. Uh, actually, that's just going to be a bit of a byproduct. What we really want to learn about today is resistances in parallel, how they work. Uh, here is a typical circuit where we have two resistances in parallel. And you can see why they are called uh, parallel, right? Because they are parallel to each other. They are parallel to the source. Uh, but really, when you have a parallel circuit, it's not because things are geometrically parallel to each other. You have a parallel circuit when the current comes along and splits and then gets back together. For example, this circuit here, definitely two resistors in parallel. Uh, it is exactly equivalent to this circuit here. Here we have two resistors in parallel as well. This circuit and this circuit, they are electrically equivalent because let's face it, what happens to the current? In this one, the main current leaves the source, comes along, splits into two, gets back together over here, and same deal over here. Even though the resistors, you know, geometrically speaking, they're not parallel, well, look what happens to the current. The main current leaves the source, comes along, splits, and then gets back together again. That's kind of the fundamental thing with regards to parallel circuits. The current splits and then it gets back together. Uh, for example, when we did the Ohm's Law Lab a couple days ago, you had your source and you had your voltmeter in parallel with the source. Why was it called in parallel? Well, not because it was you know, geometrically uh, parallel to the source, but because the current came along and the current split. Uh, parallel circuits are often called current dividers because what do they do? They take the current and they divide it into a couple of different branch currents. They take the current and they divide it into a couple different branch currents. Now, what we want to do right now is take a close look at some of the characteristics of a parallel circuit. What makes a parallel circuit a parallel circuit? Of course, there is the current thing. Uh, the total current is going to be equal to the sum of the branch currents, right? IT is going to be equal to I1 plus I2. And if you have 50 more branches, well, then you're going to have to add on 50 more currents to get that total current. So there's the first characteristic of a parallel circuit. The total current is equal to the sum of all the different branch currents, however many branches there are. Uh, that is actually Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law basically says the current into a junction is equal to the current out of a junction. The current into a junction, IT, is equal to the current out of a junction, I1 plus I2. Uh, sometimes, maybe next year if you're taking university physics, they might say Kirchhoff's first law uh, is this, it's the sum of the currents into a junction is equal to zero. Well, that's just a fancy way uh, saying this. The currents going into the junction are positive, the currents leaving the junction are negative, you add them all up, they cancel, you get zero. Uh, okay, uh, the second characteristic of a parallel circuit. And this is probably the most important thing that I'm gonna say to you as we are talking about electric circuits. Okay? When you look at something like this, what I want you to see is not one circuit, but I want you to see two circuits. There's one circuit, right? Electrons, they can go around this circuit, or if they get bored with that, they could go around this circuit. Okay, so when you look at something like this, don't just see one circuit, 
see two circuits. There's one that the electrons can go around, there's another that the electrons can go around. And remember, in any circuit, the potential increases are equal to the potential decreases. The voltage increases are equal to the voltage decreases any, in any circuit. So if you're an electron and you're going around this circuit right here, you had a, you've got an increase of Vt, a decrease of V1, that means these two things are equal. It, if you're an electron, you get bored doing this, so now you start doing this. Well, again, when you're doing this, you've got an increase of Vt, and over here, you've got a decrease of V2, and the increase is equal to the decrease. So, however many branches you have here, okay, the voltages are going to be the same. This voltage is equal to this voltage, which is equal to this voltage, and so on and so forth if you had even 50 or 100 branches there, right? So if all the voltages are the same. The vo voltage increase is equal to every single one of the voltage drops. That is the second important characteristics of a parallel circuit. Uh, the last thing with regards to a parallel circuit is that individual control is possible. If this were a, uh, or pardon me, if R2 were, let's say, a light bulb, it's easy enough to turn just that light bulb off. You could put a switch here, open it up, and yeah, this circuit is not complete anymore, so there's no electrons running through it. The light bulb is off, but this circuit is still on. It is still complete. The electrons can still go through it and of course it doesn't really matter where you put this switch if you want to turn this light bulb off as long as it's somewhere on that one branch you can put it over here if you open it up again electrons they cannot travel through this circuit there is no current going through this uh, light bulb right now it is off but this one over here it would be on so yes with a parallel circuit, individual control of things is entirely possible. So right away you know that your house is hooked up with a bunch of uh, parallel circuits because let's face it, you turn one light off, everything else stays on. Okay? Uh, if this were a house, uh, this would be where hydro feeds into it and this might be the branch for your living room, this might be the branch for your kitchen, and so on and so forth. There would be, uh, I don't know, take a look at your circuit breaker box in your house. There might be uh, 25 different branches there. Uh, we will come back in a little bit and we will work out uh, how to figure out an equivalent resistance if you have resistances in parallel. All right, let's talk about equivalent resistance for a uh, bunch of resistances in parallel. Just before we get into that though, uh, a little while ago, ooh, I was saying how a house is wired something like this. You have the main power source supplied by hydro and then a branch for your living room, a branch for your dining room and so on. And so forth, everything is its own little branch. Uh, and if you look at your circuit breaker box, you can kind of see just what the branches are. Uh, your main circuit breaker in a house, you know, that switch that if you flip it, everything goes off. Well, of course, on a circuit diagram, it would be either here or down here. And you can see that if you put a switch there, like a main circuit breaker, and you open it up, well, uh, no electrons are getting to anything. Uh, okay, now, with regards to the equivalent resistance of a bunch of things in parallel. So here's the circuit we are dealing with, right? Couple resistances in parallel. Well, suppose we were to take these two resistances out of this circuit and replace them with one resistance, a single resistance that is equivalent to them. Okay, so I got a circuit here, but instead of having two resistances, I want to take those two resistances out and I want to replace them with one equivalent resistance. Uh, so, same 
source in both cases, same potential increase in both cases, same current in both cases, and essentially the same resistance in both cases, except here you have two resistances in parallel, here you just have one resistance. Uh, how can we figure out what this one is equal to? Well, I'll tell you what, here's the formula you use, it's kind of an ugly thing, but that's okay. Here's the formula you use to figure out this equivalent resistance. It's right there, okay? Uh, it, it's not used to what you're seeing, I realize that, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, if you're trying to figure out equivalent resistance, one over the equivalent resistance is gonna be equal to one over the resistance in the first branch plus one over the resistance in the second branch. And if you have a thousand more branches there, it's gonna be plus one over the resistance in the third branch, plus one over the resistance in the fourth branch, and so on and so forth. Okay, now, uh, how does this funny looking equation come to be? Let's uh, prove that, and we're gonna prove it right here. Right here, we're gonna prove that this equation really is true. Uh, okay, so let's start off with something we know about this circuit. And here's something we definitely know about this circuit, right? The main current is equal to the sum of all the branch currents. Agreed? The main current is going to be equal to all the branch currents added together. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, remember Ohm's law. Uh, the potential decrease across the resistor is equal to the current through it times the resistor itself. If you rearrange this equation, you know, if you solve this equation for I, you take the R, the other side, it goes downstairs, there's what you get. Okay, so for any resistance, the current through the resistance is equal to voltage drop across it divided by the resistance itself. Watch this, okay? Uh, just like it says here, I is equal to V over R. The current through a resistance Okay, the current through a resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the resistance. Remember, if you've got a voltage increase of Vt here, you've got a voltage decrease of Vt here. The current through a resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the resistance divided by the resistance itself. Okay, uh, look at this. Okay, I1. The current through a resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the resistance divided by the resistance itself. I1 is V1 over R1. And then you can do the same thing with I2. It's going to be V2 over R2. And again, if there's a dozen branches, you can play the same game for every single branch. Now, you got to remember that all these voltages are the same, right? All these voltages are the same. Uh, if your electron going around this circuit, you got an increase of Vt, that means you got a decrease of Vt. If your electron going around this circuit, you've got an increase of Vt, that means you've got a decrease of Vt. All these voltages are the same. Okay, so what's how this is going to look? We come over here, you're going to get Vt over Req is equal to Vt over R1 plus Vt over R2 and so on and so forth. Remember, all these voltages are the same. Uh, okay, and I'm pretty sure you know what's coming next. You could uh, divide both sides by Vt. Basically, all the Vts are going to cancel, and what you're left with is this. Exactly what we started with. 1 over Req is equal to 1 over the resistance in the first branch, plus 1 over the resistance in the second branch, and so on. Next thing we'll do, we'll uh, use this in an example. Here's an example to take a look at. Uh, 
This is the circuit you got, 12 volt source, and you can see we have a one ohm resistance and a five ohm resistance connected in parallel to this 12 volt source. And the first question we wanna do, without doing any calculations, all right, no math allowed, is the equivalent resistance for this circuit A, less than one ohm, uh, B, between one ohm and five ohms, uh, or C, more than five ohms. Okay, let's see if we can figure this out without doing any calculations. So imagine that we just have a one ohm resistor. Let's say the five ohm resistor isn't in existence yet. So that means all the electrons, they basically have to get from one side of the circuit through this one doorway to the other side of the circuit. Okay, uh, all the electrons have to get from this side of the circuit through this one doorway to the other side of the circuit. Okay, it's going to be pretty tough for them, right? Because you've got zillions and zillions of electrons over here and they're all trying to squeeze through this one doorway. Now, when you add in that 5 ohmer in parallel, Well, now you've got all these electrons piled up over here. Now they actually have two doorways to fit through. Okay. Uh, granted, this doorway is smaller than this doorway, correct? This is a bigger resistance than this. So if a one ohm doorway, if you're talking actual doorways, a one ohm doorway might be this big. A five ohm doorway might only be that big, uh, but nevertheless, it is an extra doorway for the electrons to go through. So now, all these electrons piled up over here, uh, and if they want to get to the other side, instead of having to fit through one door, well now they can actually go through two doors. This second door, it's a lot smaller than the first, uh, but it's still another door. So, with these two resistances, in place it's actually easier for electrons to go around the circuit than with just this one resistance in place that means with these two resistances in place the equivalent resistance has got to be less than one ohm it's easier for the electrons to get around the circuit with the two resistances than just the one so the equivalent resistance has got to be less than one ohm. Okay. Uh, and if you're still wondering uh, whether that's actually true or not, well, I'll tell you what. Let's actually calculate the equivalent resistance. Okay, let's use our equation. Let's actually calculate the equivalent resistance. Okay, so again, I'm calculating the equivalent resistance for both these things. Okay, if I imagine these two resistances in parallel as one equivalent resistance, what is that one equivalent resistance equal to? Well, let's use our formula to figure that out. So one over REQ is gonna equal one over the branch in the first resistance plus one over the second resistance branch. Did I say that just right? I think I screwed that up. Sorry. Let me say that again. Uh, so using our formula to figure out REQ. Okay, here it is. 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over the resistance in the first branch, there we go, plus 1 over the resistance in the second branch. And there are no more branches to worry about, so we're done. Okay, uh, 1 divided by 1, well, that's just 1. 1 divided by 5 is 0.2, so 1 over REQ is equal to 1 plus 0.2, which is 1.2.
Okay, so let's figure out what REQ is equal to. Let's flip this side over, and you're gonna get REQ over one, which is REQ. Let's fl flip this side over. Remember, there's an imaginary one down there. So when you flip it over, you're gonna get one over 1.2. And what's that? One divided by 1.2, that's the same as 10 twelfths, which is the same as five six. so 0.83 ohms. As we expected, okay, the equivalent resistance, yeah, it is less than one ohm. So uh, here's the deal. Whenever you have a bunch of resistances in parallel, your equivalent resistance should always be smaller than the smallest resistance. Okay, when you have a bunch of resistances in parallel, the equivalent resistance it has to be smaller than the smaller resistance. If it isn't, it made some kind of a mistake. Okay, last thing, let's find the current supplied by the source. So what current is coming out of the source? Can we figure that out? Uh, we're gonna have to rely on our good friend uh, Ohm to do this, okay? Uh, how about this? Uh, now again, imagine that instead of having these two resistances here, you have one big one, which is equivalent to 0.83 ohms. So if you're going around a circuit, you've got an increase of 12 volts. That means as you go through this one big resistance, you're gonna have a decrease at 12 volts. So the decrease through the resistance, 12 volts, is gonna be equal to the current through the resistance, the total current leaving the source. If you imagine this is one big resistance, the total current from the source is the current going through that one big resistance. So the voltage drop across the resistor is equal to the current through it times the resistance itself. And this, we imagine it as one big resistor, it is equal to 0.83 and if you solve this equation the 0.83 goes over the other side it goes downstairs you're going to get I believe it comes out to 14.4 amps again remember that is just Ohm's law the voltage across the resistor which is the same as the 12 volts, is equal to the current through it times the resistance itself. V equals IR. Uh, I will post an, an assignment to go with this uh, naturally. Uh, you won't have to do the whole assignment. I tell you the truth off the top of my head, I'm not sure which questions you're gonna have to do, but read the instructions and they'll be in the instructions. Tomorrow, we're gonna take another look at parallel circuits. Uh, we're gonna take a look at, uh, well, probably about as complicated a circuit as you're ever going to see in this course. If you can follow along tomorrow's example, you are uh, good to go as far as this stuff is concerned. Uh, bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.